information that states is just so easy because everything's so familiar. You know, and that's what I don't know if a lot of the guys in Europe and stuff understand. Like, they don't realize how, how just how different it is, how much harder it is for for us to come over there and try and establish ourselves and race and stuff like that. Just because it is, I mean, it's a completely foreign, you know, foreign land. You know, and and what I want to accomplish in my career racing and stuff is I want to, you know, I want to excel. I want to continue to progress in racing and stuff. And so I felt I needed to be over there constantly getting pressured and pushed in races and stuff like that. I think it's a more viable um, option in terms of making a career out of it over there than it is here. Being in the U.S., you race against the same guys every weekend. And if you're good, you can just crush them. And going to Europe, if you're good, you're maybe 20th. You know, or maybe 15. And if you're really, really good, you're 10th. I'm going there, I'm prepared to get my ass kicked. I'm prepared to suck ass, but at the same time, I'm prepared to learn.
<laughs> My hands hurt. Ow. Way to go, Mark. Stings. <laughs> Oh, oh my fucking hands! Woo! They're never gonna be the same. Ah! After today, I was actually a little bit, you know, like, eh. It's been a long year, whatever. Do I want to go to Europe and suffer through that? But, you know, I think it's good to go there and race and get that experience. You know, I'm getting my ass kicked, but at the same time, I'm gonna learn how to ride my bike fast. Cyclocross and cycling in Belgium and Holland and stuff like that, and uh, it's like their national sport almost, you know. All the famous cyclists in Belgium, whether it's cross road, mountain bike, they're all superstars. You know, they they get all the endorsements. They're on the commercials. They they're on the talk shows. They're doing the celebrity promos, all that stuff. It's really it's you know the. The big lakes, it's hard, you know, I mean. This is not a forgiving place, you know, and, and if you if you get results, you get credibility. Obviously, the guys are way faster there, you know, like, the courses are way harder, the races are way faster, and it's really up to you to figure out what you need to do to make it happen, to make those races happen. We're coming over there and have no idea what's going on. Everything's different. The food's different, you know, the traveling's different. The way the races are run are different. 90% of the time when I go to these races, I have no idea what's going on. When you first get there, it's sort of like they're making fun of you. You know, they're like, oh yeah, USA, woo, you guys are awesome, but like you're totally sucking, you know? The pedestal of cycling is Europe, and if they, if they want to be successful at the highest level of cycling, they need to start to learn this environment. They need to start to learn what it takes. And I like to tell them, you know, you can go many years in the U.S. and sort of having this dialogue with yourself or this monologue with yourself about am I a bike racer do I have what it takes you know do I want to is this what I want to do and 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 you it takes a long time in America if you just race in America to answer that question but when you go to Europe everything's just you know it's just accelerated you know and it it, it, encap it encapsulates the whole experience there because it's just it's just it's just tough and and you realize do I do I want to do this My name is Brandon Dwight and I'm catching a flight to Brussels and I'm going to race some cyclocross in Belgium over Christmas and New Year's we're going to try to do anywhere from 6 to 8 races in 10 days I had this opportunity this past summer Cashy Lukes who's a New Zealand mountain biker he was staying at my house and he had a friend who was um, help, helping him out with some of his um, mechanic needs and stuff, uh, this guy Michel from Belgium, and I met him. And at the time I had this uh, plane voucher, international travel voucher that I needed to use, or it was going to expire on July 27th. A week prior to that I had met Michel and he said, you know, he was talking about the Belgian cross scene and, and I was asking him questions and, and I had remembered that, you know, there's all these races over the holidays and I said, oh, maybe I'll come to Belgium and race. And he's like, you should do it. And uh, he's like, I will take care of you. I will, I will be your mechanic. I will drive you around. We will race and, you know, you can do eight races in 10 days. It is not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, it is no problem. And so that night I had like one day to make a decision and, uh, you know, not knowing anything about the races or even if I could get into them, I drove down to the Denver International Airport and booked a ticket. The whole main reason for going out there is just the opportunity. It, it presented itself and I like to just jump on things like that because you can always look back and and say, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. And, and, um, and I'm not the youngest guy in the world either. I'm 34 now, so, um, you know, the I'm not going to be able to probably ever do this again, so I just figured, you know, why not go for it? I want to see what it's all, what it's about, and not just, you know, read about it in magazines or see pictures or, you know, watch videos. I want to kind of immerse myself in it and and uh, just kind of live like a live like a professional bike racer for a week and uh, just try to soak it all in. I'll be washing the bikes, giving them new 
fresh bikes during the race and after that picking them at the finish driving them back home cleaning the bikes again and preparing material for the next race so um, it's kind of running non-stop uh -oh. Uh, that's I know where it's Gertian already. How you doing buddy? Uh, fine, what about you? Oh I'm hurting right now. How are you doing? How's the tripping going? Oh it's good so far. Yeah? Hard, normal. Just kissing the ground of Belgium? Oh yeah. Well, not even, it, not no? even the ground, the fucking sidewalk. Oh that's even better? Yeah I know. They it's don't, a lot, they, it's a lot they, more friendly. Yeah. You know, it, it tends to bite back. <laughs> I'm gonna be way the F back there. You don't have 2,000 UCI points. <laughs> I think I have two. <laughs> They like to get right in there. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, they they like hang their head over the fence, yeah. and you come by, and then they pull their head out of the way right at the last second. It's pretty crazy. Wow. Are you aiming for him? Like the people. He just rode by and just like slap. What are you doing? What popping his face in the face? Wow. Oh, it's yeah. You slap them. Well, like slap. at the finish line, you know, and they come to the last line. There's people crowd the line. Yeah. I just aim for the people in the crowd. There's his face. Got it. Uh, starting to feel light-headed on the last laps. I kept thinking that the leaders were going to come, like. With four laps to go, I was like, this is going to be my last lap. I'm going to go 100%. Fucking three laps. Okay, 100%. <laughs> last lap, I was like, when the hell are they coming? <laughs> uh, it's good. I think the fact that it's in a major metropolitan like center, like right in town where people can just like walk to and it's not like in some remote area where people have to drive and... Um, and they just turn into more of a festival, you know, like there's music and beer and, you know, it's just, Tons I mean, it's part, like food places. yeah, but it, it's more it's the culture, you know, it's just people appreciate it more 
than uh, than they do in the states, at least you know, on a larger scale. So. <laughs> This is how I deal with the bad races. <laughs> Flat tire, crash, pastries. <laughs> Simple as that. But these people are happy about the race here. Oh. Beauty. Look at this. <laughs> this, looks, this looks like this is gonna be the one that goes in my stomach. That's the one I'm gonna be getting. Hello. Uh, Twee, uh, Yeah. Sometimes you don't want everyone seeing you, you know what I mean? You gotta be real incognito about this. So here, I'm gonna hook you up. There you go. Wait, why don't you want to see? There they are. <laughs> see? It's not always so pro to be eating these after the race. See? It is Christmas. Merry Christmas. We are in Hofstad. Uh, it's the day before the World Cup and we have a training day. We get to ride the course and check everything out. It looks easy when you see them. Oh, it looks. Kashi. Come on, Kiwi! Kiwi racer! Come on, Kiwi! Not too warm, Kiwi? Huh? Not too warm? <laughs> Lots of sand. Oh, it's only sand here. It's all about that. Speed! There's like... Oh, I know, like... And there are all these, um, like, old guys on these bikes, like... And they're out watching the racers, and they're so into it, you know? Oh, oh it worked! Yeah. That was crazy. Just one, though. You need to try it again? I need that chiropractor. I <laughs> need it. There's a card, 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 um, but it's nice to come back and see the see the family again here. But yeah, yeah, to see how they how they do it for Christmas, you know what they do over this period. It's it's nice to be part of. Mm -hmm. Part of it all. Like you don't know who you're racing against. Like over there, I always know who I'm racing against. Even in the elite races, I'm like, okay, I'm riding with Tonkin, I'm riding good, or stuff like that. Where here, I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. I could be riding like crap, or I could be riding really well. So I don't really know. There's only like a couple guys who I actually know who they are. So yeah. if I'm riding with the guys that I know who they are, then I know I'm riding well. But other than that, I'm kind of like. Who's this guy? <laughs> oh, 
I think I'm gonna go try and score some frites though, because that's the best. They have the, the frites stands here are so good. It's the secret. That's definitely the best recovery food. Frites. <laughs> yeah. Frites, man. Oh yeah, come on. Come on, Luigi. I can tell. Look, look at you. See right here. Frites. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people here, just all ages, all like, you know, types of people, just people coming out for, just to enjoy the day and watch the races, eat some food and drink some, some beers and just have a good time and, and uh, it's, it's like a family event, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if it's the same as like going to like an, like an NFL football game in, in the U.S., but maybe like, like a college football game where you kind of get the family together and you go and you tailgate and you, you go and have fun. It's not so much about the game as it is just like being with friends and family and having fun, you know, and, and not really like, uh, I mean, they're here to watch the race, but yeah, for some people it's a big deal, for others it's not, but um, it's more just about the experience, you know. So. Why do you guys come to these races? Just for fun? Yeah. Just, just to drink the apple stuff? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, do you have a favorite racer? Yes, Sven Nas. Nice. Sven Nas? Nice. Right. Yes, he's from, uh, we have different uh, UF states, we have pro provinces, and Sven Nas is from my uh, province. Oh, okay. and so is that why you guys support Sven Nas? Right, yes. it's because he's from where you're from? Yes. And you have these teams, right, that are like, they wear the jackets with their names on Yes, the you have uh, supporters for uh, other uh, riders, but we support uh, Sven Nas. I think my parents um, are starting to accept it. They, you know, every year I go away more and more, so they start to get used to it. Wow. Um, but I'm sure they, my mom misses me. <laughs> I know she does. I miss her too. This is my second World Cup. I did uh, Milan on the 8th of December, and uh, I had an okay time over there, but I know I can do better. So yeah. I want to make sure I do a couple World Cups before Worlds and, and then have a good idea of what it is like to race with these girls. <laughs> 15, Martin, Lavalli, Czechia. 29, Ryan Driven, United States of America. 16, Zednik, Stibar, Czechia. 44, Mikhail Baumgartner, Switzerland. 7, 7, Wim Jacobs, Belgium. 30, Barry Wicks, USA. 45, Stephen Turner, Switzerland. 24, Peter Fisher, Camille, Alderberg, Netherlands. 31, Peter Nelson, Jonathan Spain, UPC. 8, Klaas van Tornhout. 17, Simon Ekkia. 18, Simon Ekkia. 19, Martin, Czechia. 
Pas op, hè? Pas op, hè? fast I mean like they ride that sand like it's they're on pavement you know I mean they went by me in the sand and I like, was like I just got out of the way you know oh, they were, you were in the sand when, yeah. when they came yeah. by yeah. wow that must have been crazy yeah it's, uh, it's pretty cool I mean it's a little embarrassing but it's still fun <laughs> Yeah. I just don't quit. They have to physically remove me from the race course for me to quit. You know? What's the rule on if they let you finish or not? It's like if you started your last lap, or you got to get to the finish line before they come by you. You know. Really? So you didn't you, you made hit it. lap today? No. You didn't. You, no, no. you made it. Yeah, I turned it on with half lap to go. I rode the last half lap like the same speed that those guys did racing for the win. I knew I had to. I turned it on. You know. Uh, I it was they'd ugly. Let you finish it. Last lap was pretty brutal, I was pretty worked. I flatted with like three to go, or the group I was with, and then I was just by myself. So I was like riding around and trying not to kill myself. There's spectators <laughs> crossing the course. On the last lap, there were people everywhere. It was pretty funny. I crashed coming into the sand on the last time, and everybody was cheering for me. It was pretty good. So I don't know, it was, a, it was a good race. It was hard, but I'm happy with how I rode, I guess. It was, yeah. you know, 
get get the legs moving a bit and see how see how it goes the next couple days. Yeah. Oh, we got to put new cables in, maybe a new chain, and uh, wash everything, eh? Like today, it's all sand, a lot of work. Yeah, and how many, like, how many bikes do you have? No, we got... With all the guys. Yeah, two, two bikes a rider, so that makes 17 or 18 guys over here, so 35, 36 bikes. It's a lot, a lot of work. How many people do you have working? Now, uh, this afternoon, we were with two guys. So we take all the sports bikes and the juniors bikes and now the other guys are here and the 10 bikes maybe an hour and a half with three, four people now. It makes it. And then we are finished, we go home. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy Bear, what are you doing to me, bud? I was fun. You said in the No, I'll probably mess up now. No, you think you're gonna make something after a race? You're gonna make something real fast, and then it takes forever. And they are hungry, and they want to eat, but. Food needs time to cook, you know? Especially if you did a race, you know? They are hungry and you want to feed them all fast and need some time. Do you cook for all these guys every night? Yeah. Every night. I'm used to it though. We have the road guys in the summer, so it's not nothing new. I'm, I'm used to, I used, I cook every night for the road guys too, so. I'm used to cook for like 16, 17, 18 people. Yeah. Have that when you're done, Bjorn. Hey, it's enough beans. Enough wimples for you. Put it back, you're getting fat. That's gonna supervise. See, that guy ate too many lentils down there. Getting fat, Jeremy. That's all like you. <laughs> That's all that ass jiggling today. Free riding. <laughs> means you were twice as small. Can I see that? Okay. What choice? Yeah. Okay, guys. Quickly. Respectable day. Respectable day. I feel like we're uh, finally getting on track a bit, getting into the rhythm. I, mentally, I felt like we, we, we were ready to play the game today. I felt like everybody was, at least I felt, my perception was that everybody was really ready to really go for it and open up. So that's a good sign. I mean, mentally, I felt that way. Um, <clears throat> we're in the rhythm, and, and you know, now I really feel like we can build on today towards Saturday, which is going to be massive. I mean, as a World Cup with all four events, um, it's going to be big. So <clears throat> I want to show you guys, you know, this, this is real money here. John Baker, this is your money, 300 euro today. And that, this is kind of the way it goes, you know. You get UCI points, you move up the ladder. Jeremy, 300. <clears throat> Eric, 300. <clears throat> Barry Wicks, 500. Rolling. Two minutes of and Ryan, 500. So you know, count my money in the city. Yeah, if you were 15th, you'd be getting 600. So I want you younger guys to see that money right there, because that's uh, the goal is someday you're going to be getting those all the time. <laughs> um, combination of being national team coach and that, that drive, that motivation to help our guys prepare better. Um, I went over and mentored under Noel de Jonquera in Belgium as part of the USA Cycling Mentor Program for the road. 
So I was there in the summer of '03 with Noel, and with with a pretty strong desire to try to set something up for cyclocross. So that's what I did, and and then um, put together this camp after our nationals for about two weeks um, to get. There's two two visions for it, two two motivations. One to get our riders better experience over there and then to prepare them for the world championships. And so this will be the third year. Um, Euro Cross Camp 3. Flex Bjorn, do the dishes, flex. Bjorn, oh. hard at work. Ready for the tour? Uh, so this is the junior room. This is Troy Wells. He's gonna get wasted. Watch. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get the temporal kid. region. <laughs> I gotta get in on this. I'll get you, little man. I'll get you. Get him where you need to get him. <laughs> Oh, that was a low blow. No. Oh, I got to do it again, buddy. Anyways. Things like Golden Grahams, Cocoa Puffs, anything with peanut butter, usually it's not going to last very long. I went through in two days 150 cups of rice pudding or something. The kids just eat it all like it's like their mom like and dad crack. don't buy them any at home. <laughs> You need to take him to the wall. You need to go to the wall. Yeah. Where's that? The wall. Just like down the road a bit. Like five, two minute walk, probably. What? Look at all the crap they have in there, man. You can buy toilet paper and like. Martini crap and Yoko drinks. <laughs> it's like pasta salad or like monkey brain. Dude, it looks like squid. If you're old enough to work the machine, you can buy it. What am I gonna do with two fives? Do they always break it up? So they give me a ten? Or so they give me a one? Let's pull it up. I've never been to Europe other than Belgium in the in the, the winter time. And the first time I ever came to Europe was for the first cross camp, and the only times I've been back to Europe are for the cross camp. So, <laughs> Belgium in January sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it here. I think I feel like I feel pretty at home here. It's pretty. It's a. Uh, Similar type of people that I think I grew up with in Minnesota, very kind of blue collar and kind of self-effacing and not very, not too serious, but hardworking at the same time, you know?
there's a pizza veggie of Hawaii on their hot snacks menu. Well, I'm not thinking Minnesota. You know what a California burger is in Minnesota? <laughs> no. So that's a burger that comes with lettuce and tomato. Ooh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's from California. Oh, crazy. Average day in Izzy. I'm Pretty simple. Usually get up around nine o'clock average and uh, you know, drink some coffee, check the emails, check the websites, cycling news, velo news, that whole spiel. Whatever. You know, 10 30, 11, hit the bike for whatever the training brings. Then uh, come back on a great day, you get a nap, you get a nap in. Uh, on another day, you know, you'll do some work maybe on your bikes or hang out, look forward to dinner, you know, catch up on some more emails, a lot of emailing going on, a lot of looking at the computer. And then, uh, you know, then catch some dinner, DVD on the, on the TV, stretching, and that's really it. And then just looking forward to the next day's race, you know. I'm eating horse meat. Speaking <laughs> of fast, adding horsepower. I don't know. There's something. I don't know. I don't know. I Then you say, there's a lot to do in Isagam, <laughs> but my legs hurt. You don't say there's nothing to do in Isagam. There's not much to do. There's not much to do. When you can't understand the language very well, it's definitely a little bit of a yeah, hindrance as far as mind. mixing in. It's funny how you stand out, like, you just go to the grocery store and everyone looks at you and they know you're not Belgian. And it's like, I'm not really dressed that funny or anything. It's not like I'm... Wearing a big robe or something. <laughs> but, you know, people will just start talking English to you before you even have a chance to say anything. Yeah. It's pretty funny. And then a lot of the people around here actually know L's and Noel, and they know that all the U.S. Sure, riders stay with them, so. Oh, they yeah. see a young American around. They're like, oh, they're like, oh you're staying with L's, right? Yeah. Yep, I'm staying <laughs> with L's. Look, I read this much here, and I have to read this much more, so. It'll probably wow, be done. Exhilarating wakes. I'm what, a quarter of the way through, so hopefully I'll have it done so I can get back to my other books. Harry Potter took precedent. I'm reading Crime and Punishment, Angel's Ashes, and oh, what's the last one called? I can't remember. But in the midst of four books right now, so. But Harry Potter always takes precedent. It's too fun. I never had a TV when I was a kid, so I always just read books. I like reading. It was an exciting childhood for young Barry. It was. Very exciting. Read books and ride my bike. <laughs> That's what I do now, too. Harry Potter just got stuck on the train. 
Malfoy was being mean to him, per usual. What Kicked him in the nose. What are you nose. talking about? Huh? What are you talking about? Harry, they're on their way to school, and he's hiding, and, but then Malfoy caught him and kicked him in the nose and paralyzed him and made him hide under his invisibility cloak. I track bookmaker, bookmark, or whatever the hell that online betting thing is. Uh, cycle cross, GVA. Here we go. Tomorrow. Oh, Luna, right? I'm putting a hundred euros on Tonkin. <laughs> They're gonna be like, who? <laughs> they have Nice one or 1.5, Wellens 4.25, and some guy I don't even know, 3.5. Those are the odds for tomorrow. I think, yeah, that's tomorrow. I don't know why they don't have uh, Tonkin on there. Tonkin, you didn't make it. Really? Yeah. Dude, you know what we haven't listened to? What? In like just about a day is Ozone. Oh yeah, dude. But we can't turn it on now. Really? Yeah. That'd be bad luck. Yeah. Bad luck? It was bad luck last time. It was? Yeah. Well, of the kids from America, it's not easy to come over. You know, we know that. You have to leave everything behind. You know, you're hours away from home with the plane, and uh, but try to give them, you know, as much as possible uh, a home uh, to do that. You know, when again, when you're 18, 19, it's not leaving. It's not uh, easy to leave uh, everything behind. You know, the level in Europe is, uh, you know, maybe you know five percent higher. Now, this five percent are not easy to bridge. You know what I mean? It's not easy. And uh, if you don't do a lot of races when you're young, on a high level, it's very, very, very hard to close the gap. Now we're gonna, we're gonna see what your racing is all about. One layer. <laughs> you zipped up some of my chest hair. Two layer. Three layer. Four layer. Five layer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and closing the gap, it's worth. You know, it's only a few percent off. It's close, but it's hard to do the extra few percent. You know, that's how it is in life too. The extra two, three percent are so hard to close it. And if you don't do that when you're young, uh, again, you have a very small chance to make it. Huh? I'm so scared. I'm scared of what? I ain't nervous with this shit. So if you get nervous with everything. I know. I think girls are probably the only thing you don't get nervous with. <laughs> That's because I think you're gay. Het is een mooie wapen. 
En we zien dus aan de lijn nog steeds serie Boy van Poppel, de zoon van Jean Paul. Yeah, two Americans, two juniors in the top ten, yo. Wow. Sixth or seventh, I think I was. Oh. So, um, then Danny was eighth. He won the sprint. If I could sprint like Danny, I would have won that, and I would have gotten fourth. But Danny's a good sprinter, and uh, I'm I'm a good sprinter, but not as good. <laughs> so I can't say I'm not good, because then my dad will be mad at me, <laughs> or he'll be like, "No, you're good." You know, you know. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that shit pretty good. And then my hip, my arm. Was that? That was right before the pit in the first. Yeah, whole shot in, and then tanked shit on that first pit corner. Kind of rough, but I got the I got the actual whole shot, which was pretty cool too. And then worked my way up from like 23rd to eight. Kind of cool for a first year, so whatever. You want another jelly bean? Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, the last lap was fucking crazy, man. There was, there was like three and four wide through all the turns. Like everybody's trying to move up that one or two spots, you know, to get ready for the sprint and stuff. And uh, I mean, we we're going through like, there's a section that's in the woods. It's like a, a left, right, left, you know, and it's just, it was just three wide. Everybody's trying to fit in a spot where one person can go. And through the whoops, it was, you know, elbow to elbow, over the bridges, everywhere. It was pretty nuts in that last lap, but uh, it's nice to be able to show it. Show yourself at the front of the race a little bit, you know, and stuff. So, but yeah, that was fast as hell, dude. I don't even know. I don't. I don't even know. We did 11 laps or something like that, you know, and 12 laps. I mean, we had to average probably 35k an hour. Yeah. Easily. I mean, some of those sections, like you know, I didn't have a big enough gear going on that starts starts straight. Really? Like I was spun out. We had to be doing like 55, 60k an hour. So fast, man. Just oh, single file, you know, everybody's just trying to fight for a wheel. Cold as hell. <laughs> I'm still cold. So, <clears throat> I don't know, it'll take a day or so to defrost, but overall, it's good. Everyone that's here from the States is riding well. Yeah. We're all real close, so. And we're right in there, you know, we're not, a, we're not a joke, you know, people see us. I mean, to be in the 30s in a real respectable field like today is a, you know, that's a great result for everyone. So, I think everyone's leaving here with high expectations for themselves going into the rest of these races. Quest to find a waffle and a, a good waffle. Oh wait, what's this over here? And coffee. And then we will polish it off with a little chocolate. My first waffle in Belgium. Pretty damn good. I don't think this is um, on Sven Nisa's diet. Right for now. But I don't care. They do?
we had Bjorn in the lead in the first lap, and then he flatted. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. But he was, he and Danny were second and third, and then Bjorn flatted, then had bike trouble. And Danny rode a good race, maybe top 11, 12, somewhere in there. It's really good. Uh, and the Espoirs. It was muddy. Definitely took me like three laps to remember how to race in the mud before I felt like I was going fast. But it was all right. First World Cup we've done, so. No, it was shitty though. I gotta go get warm so I don't get sick. And this up. pretty fortunate to be here with Michelle and the support that he has with Michelle and I don't think he'd be able to really do it any other way I think we'd get amazingly lost and it's, I don't know there's so much organization involved in finding places and driving around the country and getting entrance fees and bikes and cleaning stuff and I don't know I think he just has an amazing amount of gratitude for him and the whole experience so This is going to be an epic. <laughs> this is one of the nastiest crowds I've ever seen in Belgium, let alone ever, actually. Yeah. I'm not joking. When it's I've ten, been here a couple ten years. Lap. Remember, Howard, the Hoogalade 10K today. <laughs> We're naming this the Hoogalade 10K. 10K running race. Yeah. Okay, it's sort of like a duathlon. It's a little bit of everything today. Big risks, running, bike changes. Bust out all the all the stuff. <laughs> even uh, you know, it's, it's even a uh, you know like a ma it's like a it's like a mask too. Cause you're you know you found religion in the van there earlier after tree riding the course, so you sort of. I told Tonga that I gotta start going to church again. This is just too, this is too much for me. The problem is, I tried that once here, it just doesn't work out. It's crazy. Yeah, I understand those guys. It's hard enough to follow church at home in English. I come here speaking Dutch. Yeah, that's nice. We staan er goed aan de start. Ik denk dat we wellicht zo meteen door de officials zullen zien gebeld voor de land. Hold on. 
butter mud that you just can't even you can barely pedal through you know and it was kind of cool because Sven Nies uh, passed me and and I watched him you know on some sections and he was riding the sections the same way that I was like like um, getting off and running or I was taking the same lines but he's just doing it like ten times faster <laughs> I kind of had this feeling I'd be walking around like a zombie, like, you know, this time, but um, 
I don't know, when you just kind of get into this rhythm of, you know, waking up, eating, going to the race, racing, going back, cleaning up, relaxing, you know, getting to bed, getting a good night's sleep, and you don't have the, the other stresses of life, like, um, you know, just your job and other things, it's, it's, you kind of, I think it's good, you know, you sort of, uh, you have that mental relaxation, so it helps um, with your recovery and just, you know, how you feel in general, so, um, you know, I think a lot of people, if they don't commit like Ryan and, you know, and Jonathan and some of the other guys have done, you know, to, to that lifestyle of just revolving everything around racing and um, if you don't do that, I don't know, I think it's hard to reach that next level, you know, so, you know, I commend those guys for, for making that commitment and uh, especially over here, I mean, just the weather and the, it's cold and muddy and, you know, rainy and snowy and windy and, and, uh, you know, to, to do that day in and day out would be tough, it'd be really tough, but uh, it's fun for a week. Well, away from home is more away from Tim, he's going to be five weeks, Yeah. but away from home is until end of May, I won't go back home, so five months. What, well, maybe you just answer that, but what do you miss most about being home? Yeah, I miss Tim, of course. <laughs> Being with him, you know, he's my partner, and especially in cross because he knows so much about it. Yeah. But in everyday life too, yeah. it's okay. I'll, I'll manage. <laughs> What is your front? 39. And the back? 1227. Well, there's a part where I was 38 and my biggest in the back, and I was like. Yeah. But if you you sh you should be fine. Get some speed. You know that. <laughs> my best season, but my best uh, season without luck, also. So <laughs> it's uh, it's been a not a very uh, easy season for myself. It's been a, a lot of uh, mishaps and and uh, some health issues, and but. I keep coming back for more and I keep getting something, so that's what uh, cyclocross is all about. It's about uh, <clears throat> putting, <laughs> you put everything into the sport, but you know, um, you you take what you can get on that particular day. I just uh, been doing cyclocross since I was a junior and uh, <clears throat> I've come to Belgium for the last three years and now <clears throat> we live in Old Nard, Belgium. And uh, I've been racing on and off here for you know ever since I was a junior. So now it's just uh, half the time 
half the year is full time and half of the year is in America. The sacrifices are you miss your family and you miss your friends and but uh, you try to make more here and um, <clears throat> maybe you don't get all the results that you want right away but if you stick with it maybe uh, in the long run you'll become one of the best. So that's that's the sacrifice. Every day is a sacrifice. My my wife and child are here and <clears throat> you have to you have to be very committed not to uh, we we jumped into it and here we are and it doesn't last forever but um, so that's what we keep telling ourselves why don't we do it now and and then uh, later on see what uh, life brings. Then a Vanker from the course, the Jonathan Page as the Vereinigte Staaten. Jonathan Page, the winner of the Gemara. That's a good thing to do, but it's a good thing to do. That's a good thing to do. Wann ich geliebt, los mal, äh, zieh halt frei, dass ich zu sehen, die Damen und Herren, und der Problem, wir sind nicht gut, nein, ich bin der Ruhe. Äh, Jonathan Page, der Winner of this race hier in... How many more races am I gonna win? Ah. I won't guess. <laughs> I don't know. How many, how many did you break? Uh, you Is that break? my last one? Uh, last cliff bar. <laughs> means last race. We're survived with that guy. And then and then we're racing with the U twenty threes today, so it'll be fun to race with like some of the US under twenty three kids. They'll probably school me. But they'll be fun anyway, so but uh, should be a good event. Look at that kid over there. Ripping it around on the track. Awesome. Two million years. I crashed this one, yeah. It's possible, I mean. Well, I did. That's the one that I hurt my finger. I tripped on the stairs, and my pinky was like this way instead of this way. So now it's kind of puffy and blue and purple. But feels good. I'll race. <laughs> it was actually in the, right after the first set of stairs. There's you know, it was this real steep drop into an abrupt ending at the bottom. And I hit it and I, my weight went so far forward, just front tire washed out and put my elbow into the ground first, you know, and it shot my shoulder up really high. And so from my ear all the way down my back and my side, it's just all the muscles and tendons are just strained out. So it makes it a little difficult to pedal around, but whatever, it'll be all right. I think it's frustrating for, uh, for them, you know, both of them, I think there was a circuit they really liked a lot. They, you know, they were both thinking to have a very good place. And, and if you see Ryan, you know, start around 23rd, where the first time he went in the pit, when he crashed on TV, he was already in 11th. So he was moving up pretty good. So, you know, and he's saying he was feeling very well. And, you know, he really, it's hard to say after, you know, half lap how you're going to be finished, but it looked like he could make the top 10 points. But, you know, here there's so much pressure on the start. Uh, they are not used to that. Rumbouts. Messi. What do you guys think about the people who just come over and stare at you? <laughs> well, I, wish, I think I wish they'd bring their hot granddaughters here instead of their old cells. Come on! 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 Come on!
sucks because there was all mods and then I'm just thinking on the moment they all show up in the house <laughs> I'm think of all the mod that's gonna be in my house if it's dry it bad? Saturday uh, yeah. you weren't there well, no at your house oh at my house <laughs> disgusting disgusting the cars the house the clothing the towels I had to throw them away <laughs> I wasn't able to to us up uh, they weigh like 15 kilo, so I'm not gonna watch those things. <laughs> My last race of the year. Cheers. Oh, the Cheers. first race to, of the year. To, yeah, first oh, race second, of the year. Second, second. You already <laughs> raced yesterday. To second Michelle. Race. To Michelle. To Michelle. Oh, I finished it off. Fucking Snape killed Dumbledore. What the hell? He's supposed to be a good guy. It's so annoying. And now they leave you hanging, it's gonna be like a year before the next book comes out. So you know what the hell's gonna happen. It's driving me crazy. But it's good and finished it. I was up till about two the other night. I got all into it, so. Finished her off. So Snape killed Dumbledore. 
Malfoy was supposed to do it, but he couldn't do it. And now Harry is like on a vengeance run. He's gonna go out and find Voldemort and kill him, basically. Probably, in the next book. That's what's gonna happen, but pretty good. Oh, and he totally hooked up with Ginny. So, that's hot. <laughs> Having wet dreams about that last night. <laughs> I like those redheads. <laughs> hey, how many beers have you guys drink? New uh, one. Okay. Well, well. Next year we all uh, grow a beard and uh, we. Yeah, it. good idea. Good idea. Costumes. Yeah. yeah. Hey, did you see me on the last lap? Did you see it across yeah. the yeah. 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 That was too bad. Good. Yeah, we so you got uh, you got double. Yeah, oh, well, the last yeah, round, you didn't time. get double. No, I know. I caught those other guys, and then I just yeah. last year you made it also, but two years ago, dead yeah. Last yeah. Well, <laughs> you make it you last year. I was a lot stronger than two years ago. This year, about the same, but just yeah. Train more. Fresh. Train more. Yeah, I don't want to train anymore. <laughs> What, because you want to come over here and take my waffles? And I said there's a half a bag left in there. There's no, there's no waffles in there. Dude, you just didn't fuck it up. No, no well went in there for me and looked. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, the things I gotta do to get one waffle. Girl. I mean, honestly, I live with this kid. I keep him company all, all winter. Comes, invades my house, and the one thing I want is a waffle after this cross, and he can't even give it to me. What kind of shit I deal with. No respect, Sam. Nice, all right. <laughs>